Ruben Ace Tyler here at the Central Illinois Regional checking in with team number 1756 Argos. And I'm here with Nell, Brady, and Jacob. And this robot has been absolutely phenomenal here at Central Illinois so far. Uh, a wickedly accurate turret. Intake has been looking great. Climber doing really well too. And I can't wait to go all the way through this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluealliance.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So Brady, we're going to start out with your robot here, talking about that cargo journey going through. Talk to me more about, uh, you have an interesting intake uh, over the bumper here. Talk to me about what's gone into that, and we'll follow that cargo journey through your robot. So we've had many renditions of this, but it's uh, pneumatically actuated. Uh, the, the wheels here, the uh, mechanum wheels, pull the ball to the center. Uh, up over the uh, bumper here, uh, it pulls it into this elevator system with a system of belts. Uh, the belts push it up to the uh, bottom of the shooter where the, these belts to uh, improve our, the, the great accuracy of our shooter uh, keeps contact on the ball at all points and then uh, uh, leaves our shooter with um, the actuation of our uh, adjustable hood to change the angle and for distance of the shot. Well, let's break that down a little bit, starting out with your intake on there. Uh, let's talk geometry on that. So your geometry, your intake, uh, very compact. It, it fits in nicely. When you're looking at this game challenge, how did you come up with wanting to do this type of intake? So obviously we, we need to keep our um, intake inside the frame perimeter until uh, the beginning of uh, the match. So in, in order to do that, we um, use these uh, pneumatic pistons to... Uh, keep it inside and uh, effectively pull the ball in. So this comes out like this, we'll follow that cargo in. So the cargo is going to go into this index here. Do you have any sensors as it kind of goes through or anything like that at all? Uh, yeah, so we have a, um, a time of flight sensor that uh, detects the color of the ball to make sure, you know, if we're red alliance, we, we get red balls. Um, same thing up here then uh, with our uh, line mic camera for uh, detecting the uh, hub. And I know we'll be talking about programming in just a little bit as well too, but let's talk about uh, your uh, turret on here as well. So uh, you're going with a sword drive, but you also have a turret and it's been a great combination for you. From a priority standpoint where you're looking at the game, uh, what made you decide you had to go with turret and swerve? Uh, so with the turret and swerve, we're able to shoot from pretty much anywhere on the uh, uh, game field uh, so we, we can not only move rotate on one axis with the swerve but we can also ro rotate over 360 degrees with with that turret uh, to uh, shoot from anywhere so over 360 that's really cool uh, to see and as mentioned as we're uh, filming this your team has been absolutely on fire here so far as it goes through uh, lastly, I just want to talk to you about uh, from your wheel choice on here. So you have uh, a, kind of this almost like starter wheels that goes through uh, on here. How was like your wheel choice factoring into like how your spin is of your cargo, that sort of thing? So with uh, different wheels, there's uh, squish compliant. And then we also use belts very primarily for the um, keeping the ball straight as it leaves the shooter because we, we noticed when... Uh, shooting in uh, trial, the, the ball would dribble and we would lose our accuracy without those belts. Let's move into your climber. Now going to be talking a little bit more about what's gone into that. And uh, I'd love to hear now, I know from your climber that your team has chosen to climb at the high rung, not the traversal uh, on here. So talk to me more about um, that decision process because you guys, you shoot and you score so fast uh, that it was the traversal just not that priority because you're able to outscore it? 
So having a traversal climb, it, we had to time it just right to get the hooks where they needed to be to climb all the way. And with our center of gravity, it just wasn't going to work out. We can do a traversal, but it has a higher fall rate and it's more secure sure. on the third level. And since that gets us the points we need to get the ranking points if somebody else climbs with us, we decided to go with that. So how our climber works is these actuators here drive this bar up and it raises up. And then these hooks pull us onto the mid bar where this pushes down and then springs back up over that mid bar. Then these extend, they're over already extending up touching the high bar and the hooks drive up, go over the high bar and then pull the robot up onto that part of the bar. So it's no longer in contact with the MIG one. So from a software aspect, um, it's uh, drivetrain. We can start with drivetrain. Uh, really run of the mill. We use the tools available to us already in WPI Lib to do all of the math for Swerve for us. So pretty much the only thing we have to do from a programming aspect at this point is tell it an angle and a, and a speed, and it will do that because of the tools available to us in WPI Lib. Moving on to the intake. So the intake's controlled very classically like any other deployable intake. Uh, when the shooter, when, it, when the intake is active on the controller, it actuates the intake, starts the rollers. Now, the interesting part starts when we get to the indexing system. We have two time of flight sensors, one at the front and one at the back, both indicating uh, what position uh, we have the balls in and where they are. And what that allows us to do is index our balls in a way so that they are primed for the shooter so that they don't just blow out whenever they want to. Moving on to the shooter, it's on a turret which rotates about 360 degrees, uh, 180 in each direction from its current position. We're running a limelight camera as well, and the way we get angles and distances from our targets is just some, I wouldn't say simple, trigonometry. And we run through our math sequences, and that gets us both our distance and our angle. So all we have to do, again, from a programming aspect, is we just acquire the target. It sends its data through the pipeline, and it is able to acquire both its direction and distance. And it adjusts the wheel speed and hood accordingly. Uh, the climber is probably one of the cooler parts in the programmatic aspect, because uh, the way we actually have it set up in programming is you can just give it any position that you want it to go to, you put it into um, a queue, and uh, this is a C++ feature, is a built-in uh, queue container, and it'll just run through all of these set points in a sequential order. And we can actually demonstrate that now. So the first position we have is a ready state. So in this state, the climber is able to line up with the bars, get it to where the bar will sit, like about here-ish. And then we can go ahead to a second confirm state. And at this point, we're latched on to the level two bar. And the next, the next time our driver hits confirm, it will go through its sequence. And right now, what it's doing programmatically is it's running through three separate set points that are all easily configurable on the fly. So this is our level three climb configuration. So it is running to our level three. Um, and we do have a level four sequence, but unfortunately, because of reliability, we don't, we're not running it here at CIR today. But that is probably one of the coolest aspects of programming because it's the most robust. And it can also go back from climb to its storage position. So it'll go back up to its ready for safety features, and then it will go back down to its ready, or back down to its storage position. Well, Argo 1756, uh, regardless of having traversal, your team has been absolutely phenomenal here. So we can't wait to see, of course, your performance here at the Central Illinois Regional, but looking forward to future competitions. Good luck here and, of course, throughout the rest of the season as well. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you as well for having us. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.